Good evening from the state of Kuwait. Welcome to the 7 o'clock news for Thursday, the 23rd of April 2015. I am Dalia Badran with the headlines for tonight. The National Assembly Speaker stresses the importance of a harmonious political discourse by the MPs and diplomats abroad as per the provisions of the Constitution. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says at least 42 fighters were killed in 24 hours of fierce fighting between rebels and Daesh in Syria's Damascus province. French Prime Minister says uh, police uh, have foiled five terror attacks in recent months, including a planned attack on churches outside Paris. And EU leaders gather in Brussels today to consider launching a military operation against human traffickers in Libya in the biggest effort yet to halt the deadly flow of refugees trying to reach Europe by sea. Hello and welcome. The National Assembly Speaker Marzouk Ali Al Ghanim stressed the importance of a harmonious political discourse by the MPs and diplomats abroad as per the provisions of the Constitution. This came at a dinner banquet hosted by Speaker Al Ghanim in honor of participants in the eighth meeting of heads of Kuwaiti diplomatic missions in the presence of the acting Premier and Foreign Minister Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah. The Parliament Speaker said the current Parliament maintains close uh, coordination with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to bring closer the viewpoints of MPs and diplomats, adding that the parliamentary diplomacy is an extension of Kuwait's official diplomacy that effectively contributes to serving national causes. On his part, Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid commended the role played by parliamentary diplomacy that walks hand in hand with the government's diplomacy, noting that His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmad Al Jabbar Al Sabah, affirmed in his inaugural speech that internal cohesion is the essential factor that helped the state of Kuwait overcome the surrounding challenges and threats. His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Muhammad Al Ahmad Al Jabbar Al Sabah hosted a luncheon in honor of heads of Kuwaiti diplomatic missions abroad on the occasion of their eighth meeting due today. The acting premier and foreign minister, Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, addressed the state's top diplomats on means of cementing ties with countries all over the world. Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid held dialogue with the chiefs of the diplomatic missions as part of their eighth conference, where he conveyed greetings of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmad Al Jabbar Al Sabah, to the ranking diplomats. Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid then briefed them about Kuwait's major diplomatic tasks in the near future and the Kuwaiti diplomatic corps' accomplishments, means of boosting bilateral ties with states of the world at various levels in a manner that will bolster the state of Kuwait's moderate and balanced policy for serving global security and stability. Priorities of the Kuwaiti foreign policy were also explored with respect to terrorism, sustainable development, human rights and the environment. On their part, the top diplomats expressed their views regarding means of developing the diplomatic work and facing challenges in light of the regional and international conditions. The acting premier and foreign minister, Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, hosted a luncheon in honor of the participants in the eighth meeting of heads of Kuwaiti diplomatic missions abroad due today. The banquet was attended by the Under Secretary of the Foreign Ministry, Khalid Al Jarallah.
The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that at least 42 fighters were killed in 24 hours of fierce fighting between rebels and Daesh in Syria's Damascus province. The eastern sector of the city has been intense clashes between rebels and Daesh and is strategic because it borders the Syrian Badea. Meanwhile, 13 civilians, including nine children, were killed in shelling in the northwest province of Idlib, whose provincial capital was overrun by al-Qaeda's Syrian affiliate and allied rebels. Since they lost control of Idlib city, regime forces have been trying to chip away at opposition-controlled parts of the province to protect their supply routes. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls uh, said police have foiled five terror attacks in recent months. He said the latest was a planned attack on churches outside Paris. An Algerian man was arrested on Sunday over the alleged plan after he apparently shot himself by accident and called an ambulance. Val said 1,573 French citizens or residents had been implicated in terror networks. Nigerian terror group Boko Haram's last known stronghold has been invaded in an offensive by the Nigerian army backed by neighboring countries. The attack occurred in the Sambisa forest on the border with Cameroon, where the insurgents have recently expanded their activity. A Chadian army official said that allied Chadian and Cameroonian troops were ready to attack Sambisa from the other side. Intelligence officials believe that Sambisa is the location where more than 200 schoolgirls were kept captive after being abducted by Boko Haram in April 2014. Funerals for 24 people killed in the worst ever recorded capsizing of a migrant boat in the Mediterranean have been held in Malta. More than 800 people died in the disaster. Italian police says the captain crashed uh, the boat by mistake against a merchant rescue ship. The number of boats of death in such incidents have now reached 1,750 so far this year. Migrants who themselves made the dangerous journey across the Mediterranean Sea in search of a better life joined Maltese government officials and international representatives in a white marquee erected on the helicopter pads. European Union leaders gathering for an extraordinary summit are facing calls from all sides to take emergency action to save lives in the Mediterranean, where hundreds of migrants are missing and feared drowned in recent days. The leaders will examine a plan to respond to the crisis after more than 10,000 migrants were plucked from seas between Italy and Libya in a week and are widely expected to approve swift action. EU president urged the leaders from the 28 nations to agree on very practical measures, including strengthening search and rescue possibilities by finding the smugglers and the discouraging, uh, by discouraging their victims from putting their lives at risk while reinforcing solidarity. A key part of the action plan is to crack down on the people smugglers operating off Libya and destroy their boats to stop people sneaking into Europe. The Kalboko volcano erupted for the first time in over 40 years, billowing a huge ash could uh, a huge ash cloud over a sparsely populated mountainous area in southern Chile. Authorities ordered the evacuation of the 1,500 inhabitants of nearby towns along with residents of two smaller communities. The National Mining and Geology Service issued a high alert barring access to the area around the volcano which lies near the cities of Puerto Varas and Puerto Montt, south of Chile's capital Santiago. 
The 6,500-foot Calbaco last erupted in 1972 and is considered one of the top three most potentially dangerous among Chile's 90 active volcanoes. Kuwait Nursing Association held a media conference with the attendance of a large media delegation to announce a brief about the second nursing conference. Second International Conference for Kuwait Nursing Association will gather the elite of speakers from GCC countries, Canada and Britain to discuss new methods in order to improve health care through developing medical devices and medication. Norhan Al Alfi has more in this report. Kuwait Nursing Association held a media conference with the attendance of a large media delegation to announce a brief about the Second International Nursing Conference. Samuel Matayri, Secretary General of Kuwait Nursing Association, said that the conference, power of a change for generations' health, will be the largest medical gathering in the field of nursing in Kuwait and the Arabian Gulf during the current year and it will be organized by the association on 26 and 27 of April. The second international conference for Kuwait Nursing Association will gather elite of speakers from GCT states, Canada and Britain to discuss new methods in order to improve health care through developing medical devices and medications. Also, al Matiri added that paying attention for generations' health in this conference is based on the development of revolution in the world of medication and medical devices that would raise the level of health services in Kuwait and accelerate the healing process if we bear in mind the importance of raising the rate of awareness and education in the society. The second day will include 200 doctors discussing medicine revolution and the patient's needs, in addition to the scientific research that will be presented to benefit the attendance. In addition, we will honor the ideal nurse on all the country levels. He added to that that the nursing association is giving high priority to the health private sector as an important successful sector in maintaining human health in Kuwait due to its efforts in the development of health pointing to the existence of a larger presence of private hospitals and clinics to have a real and tangible role in this event. While all generations considered technology a curse, Kuwait Nursing Association considered it a blessing in the treatment and the protecting of the new generations all over the world. From Balm Hotel, I am Norhan Al Alfi reporting for the English News. Kuwait Nursing. Thank you, Norhan. The GCC Golf Tournament recently kicked off at the Sahara Golf Club in the presence of the President of Arab and United Arab Emirates Golf Association, Sheikh Fahim bin Sultan Al Qasimi. Reporter Ronwa Jabouri attended the opening ceremony and has the following report. The 19th GCC Golf Tournament witnessed its opening ceremony at the Sahara Club during beautiful warm weather conditions. The tournament is expected to span over a period of four days. The opening ceremony witnessed a number of participants attend the event who arrived from GCC states the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the UAE, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Sultanate of Oman. Today was just the opening ceremony for uh, the GCC, uh, six countries that came here to Kuwait for the tournament. And they just introduced all the players and uh, the delegates from each country. Well, it's a misconception because uh, everybody thinks it's an old person's game. Uh, when they retire, it's time to play golf. But actually, there's a lot of juniors around the world and women and younger people that do play when they have time. And uh, it's just going to take a little bit of getting used to here in the Arab countries to let them know what golf is and uh, how important it is and how fun it can be. Uh, we see now we are so lucky in this time uh, and the GGC special in the golf area because they accept now to be the woman uh, to play sport and also to play in uh, the golf sport. So we are lucky in that time. and. Uh, because the golf it's very healthy, it's very unique, uh, it's uh, more technical uh, and use mental and body. So anyone to ask, like even they don't know about the role of the golf, but if you told them I'm, I play golf and they say uh, they are so excited and happy and they say wow and how come and like to, to ask me many questions interesting about that. The tournament witnesses for the first time ever the participation of female players which was highly praised by officials and is considered as a welcoming and honourable addition for the Kuwait Golf Committee.
Well, first, I would like to uh, uh, extend my gratitude and uh, sincere thanks to His Excellency, uh, Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Sheikh Salman Sabah Hassan al Mahmoud al Sabah, for patronizing our uh, golf championship. Uh, his presence gave a lot of weight and a lot of importance to the sport of golf in Kuwait, and we thank him for that. Uh, for our championship, as you know, it is the 19th for adults, the 8th for youth under the age of 18, and uh, the first ever for GCC women. So it's the first for women's golf in the GCC countries, and we are very proud that this is being held, the first one is being held right here in the state of Kuwait. Uh, as you said, it's a, a four-day tournament. It begins tomorrow for the adults. For the youth under the age of 18, it's, th it's three days. So they will be done, they will be done by Friday. While for the girls, it's a two-day event and they should be done by uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes. They'll be, be done by Thursday. Uh, so uh, we will announce the winners on Saturday after the closing uh, ceremony, which will take place probably around 2 p.m. on Saturday. So we hope to see you then. On his part, President of KGC, Mazen Al-Ansari, expressed his zeal, fervor and gratitude, feeling honored that the tournament is being held under the patronage of Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Sheikh Salman Sabah Salim al Hamoud al Sabah. For the first time ever, the GCC golf tournament taking place in Kuwait is witnessing the participation of women players. From the Sahara Golf Club, I'm Genra Jaburi reporting to you for the English News. Thank you, Ranwa. And finally, in the business news tonight, Kuwait Stock Exchange ended today in the green zone as the weighted index gained 1.52 points, reaching 435.93 points. The price index gained 24.22 points, reaching 6 1331.33 points and the KSX15 gained 0.56 points reaching 1057.27 points number of trades amounted to 5247 transactions worth 20 million Kuwaiti dinars with 321 million shares changing hands for a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Before we end, here is a quick reminder of today's headlines. The National Assembly Speaker stresses the importance of a harmonious political discourse by the MPs and diplomats abroad as per the provisions of the Constitution. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says at least 42 fighters were killed in 24 hours of fierce fighting between rebels and Daesh in Syria's Damascus province. French Prime Minister says police uh, has foiled five terror attacks in recent months, including a planned attack on churches outside Paris. EU leaders gather in Brussels today to consider launching a military operation against human traffickers in Libya in the biggest effort yet to halt the deadly flow of refugees trying to reach Europe by sea.